Hello, Gemini. Welcome to your monthly reading for September 2024. This is for Gemini, Gemini Rising, Gemini Moon, and you know we're going to jump right into it, Gemini. First of all, if you're new to my channel, I use astrology, tarot, and my guide, so you can feel like you're getting a personalized reading. Now, this is going to be a big month, and I want to formally welcome you to eclipse season. We are here. We have a full moon, partial lunar eclipse in Pisces. This is definitely going to be a game changer. And you know what? The uh, planets this month... They're having a party, Gemini. They're having a party. You're obviously invited. You're on the VIP list, okay? You're on the VIP list. You got Jupiter on your side. You uh, Listen, this is going to be huge. They're breaking out the, the, the velvet ropes for you, the really good chips, because this is one of the biggest months for you. It is so life-changing, and I say that for many reasons. One, we have five planets moving signs this, uh, uh, this month. Okay, that's going to be uh, big. You see them, uh, they're going to be underlined in red. Of course, we have more on the back here, which I'll flip over later. We have two very significant retrogrades. All right, it's pretty significant. We have the equinox. And of course, we have the eclipse. Uh, eclipses are game changers. And even though this one's a partial eclipse, it's still really big and the reason why it's so big is because you're getting a preview you're getting a window into what your life is going to be like for 2025 now i say that because the lunar nodes as i've been telling you for the past few months they're shifting okay they're leaving the aries libra axis moving into the pisces virgo axis next year next year starting in january 2025 and so you can see, not only do we have a full moon lunar eclipse this month, we kick it off with a new moon in Virgo. What did I say about Pisces Virgo axis? We even have the sun opposite Saturn, Saturn being in Pisces, the sun in Virgo. That's happening this month. So a lot of things that are happening this month will dictate where you are in 2024, 2025, especially with career. That is where Saturn is. That is where Saturn is in your sign. Saturn in Pisces, 10th house of career. Uh, fame, public recognition, honors, achievements. If you're not here for career, it's whatever you're exerting your energy into that you want to be known for. It can even be the fact that you just want to be known as the super mom of your family. Because Virgo, that's your fourth house too. That's that's. Uh, there's going to be a lot of home stuff that's happening for y'all this month as well. The foundations of your life real estate, children, uh, parents, significant other, all of that's happening. But just remember, I said that now, I said that now, everything that's happening this month, you're going to start feeling this shift into what your life is going to be like in 2025. 2025 is one of the most important, the most significant and pivotal years of the 2020s, if not the most significant. I mean, this is big. Okay. 2025 is big especially for you, Gemini, especially for you. You know Uranus is moving into your sign. We'll talk about that next year. Uh, Going to be there for a little bit before it permanently moves in 2026 in your sign. I mean, this is big. This is big. Anyway, basically, expect change. All right. Now, when I say this eclipse, eclipses, as we know, are not only game changers, but they bring change. And they always bring change. And you've, you, I did a separate video on eclipses, what to expect with eclipses. I'll leave it at the end of this video if you want to check that out. But just know that this can be change that you've been seeking. A lot of Gemini's definitely have been seeking career changes or big moments in career. This could also be change that is something is eclipsed from your life, okay? So this can be a career that puts you on the path that you need to be on, the path that you're meant to be on, all right? So as should anything happen, we're like, oh my gosh, this, I can't believe this happened. Know that it happened for a reason, all right? Remember, I said, you're setting yourself up for 2025. You also create your reality. So open that path that you need for yourself, all right? Now, the other thing is, uh, if you are not here, like I said, for career or fame or public recognition, uh, it's 
still going to be something that has to do with your passions, but there's, and it can also just be an adjustment. It could even be like, maybe that, you know, maybe you don't want to leave your, you know, the company that you work for. Maybe this is the month where you are, you know, but you want to get promoted. You want a bigger title. Maybe that happens this month. Okay. So that's the end of the current job that you have, but you're moving into a bigger office, window views, stuff like that, whatever, things like that, things like that, different boss. So it could just be adjustments and shifts that are happening for you. Now, uh, after I do this overview for you, letting you know what's happening for you this month, Gemini, then I break it down or and then I do your spread. And then after that, I break it down week by week and tell you all the aspects that will are going to have an impact on you. Favorable aspects, aspects to uh, look out for. So let's get started. Now, one big thing about this month that's not even on this board here, by the way, did I mention the everything under red is changing signs and the green asterisks are the best aspects of the month, if you want to mark those down in your calendar. Now, on the first, we actually kick it off with not only Uranus going retrograde, but Pluto going retrograde as well. So Uranus retrograde in Taurus, that's your 12th house, so it doesn't really have this big impact on you, uh, especially if you're Gemini rising. Um, every Gemini is going to feel this, but this is retrogrades are going within, right? So it's having this inner breakthrough. This is you wanting change. This is you having sudden awareness to the path that you do want to be on or the changes that you want to make in your life based on changes that are happening in your physical world. All right. Something inside you is going to stir around this time. Now, Pluto going retrograde, this is really big. All right. This is really big. And because you, Uranus and Taurus, that's your 12th house that's up here, your subconscious. So it could also be that there are changes happening, uh, like behind the scenes that are happening for you and it's pushing you in this new direction. Pluto retrograde in Capricorn is big. This is happening until November 19th. This is big because A, it is the last time in our lifetime that Pluto is going to be in Capricorn ever all right this is pluto was in capricorn in 2008 um, until like last year this year and then it you know moved into aquarius but now it's going back into capricorn to take care of some business before leaving forever and when i say forever not forever i mean pluto will be back in capricorn in 2238 <laughs> can you even imagine what the year 2268 will be like well, Pluto will be in Capricorn, but this is your personal power. This is transformation, regeneration with structures, systems, organizations, even traditions in your life. This is you restructuring things. This is your eighth house. So finances, okay? Investments is a big thing. Uh, love could be a big thing here as well. All right, love, relationships, but definitely uh, money matters could be a thing uh, for you around this time. Just reassessing things and letting things go. There really could be something here. It feels like this final purge, this is not serving me well. I'm setting up this new vision for myself because remember Pluto then moves back into Aquarius, the visionary for the next 20 years. And that is your ninth house of spirituality which is really nice uh and uh also wisdom and and uh, there's so much joy with the ninth house it's education learning new things higher mind it's travel publishing broadcasting so that's going to be a big thing you'll feel a lot of power there for for 20 years uh so just know at this point saturn neptune uranus and pluto are all retrograde now on monday september 2nd we do have the new moon in virgo happy labor day for anyone that lives in the u.s saturn will be opposite the sun in the new moon but to be honest you listen you've already been working with saturn's like tests as i mentioned last month so uh just be mindful that that's still happening uh just I, I would pay attention to remember new moons you want to initiate new things you want to set intentions this is again in Virgo so that's your fourth house your domestic sector home you know family children significant other even like real estate matters could be a thing but just pay attention to what happens around this time this new moon has this window for about two weeks New things are shaping up here. This is going to be big. And why do I say it's going to be big? Because this new moon corresponds to the full moon lunar eclipse in Virgo in March 2025. Remember, I said everything's shifting to Virgo and Pisces. So for you, that is home and work home and work all right so uh 
and you could even have uh, some activity around health, fitness, and wellness, as well as work with this new moon in Virgo, okay? Um, I do love that Uranus will try in Pluto. I mean, this is major empowerment, major transformation, breakthroughs that you could have around this time as well. I know it's not on the whiteboard, but again, not everything's on here because I just don't have the room. There's so much happening. These are just the highlights. Mars squaring Neptune, 29 degrees. This is a mutable degree. Uh, it's also a critical degree. And so really pay attention to this aspect. Remember, I've always said Mars and Neptune couldn't be any more dissimilar. They have nothing in common. It's like putting the cheerleader in the same room with the goth kid. They like, like, what do we do? Do you know what I mean? Like, but this is a square. So they're really not going They're They're not getting along. They're not seeing eye to eye here. So mm. with that said, remember, Neptune is illusion, delusion, confusion. There's lower frequencies. Mars is like bringing that out of Neptune. And so escapism as well. But then when you got Mars in the mix, suspicion, jealousy, even some deception energy around this time. And so Remember, Neptune retrograde in Pisces, a lot of this can be for you. Um, it definitely can be. Well, remember, Mars is still in your sign at this time. And then you've got Neptune and Pisces in your 10th house of career, fame, public recognition. So there could be something here where uh, you have to ask yourself, is this the reality that I want for myself? Am I am I being honest with myself? Okay, Mars and Neptune are going to they're going to drudge that out. All right. Mars is being naughty here. All right. And so remember, you want to practice patience. You really want to know exactly what uh, and other people can be involved. Colleagues can be involved at this time as well as part of this, you know, uh, jealousy, deception, because like you obviously need someone else there to have those elements. So just remember, Mars is Mars is trying to get you on, uh, you know, TMZ. You don't want you don't want to be there. Just handle these energies with grace. Know your reality. Choose the red pill. Neptune's bring a little bit of that matrix. Like what's real, what's not. The red pill is going to be fine. Okay, whatever bill you want, whatever. Now Wednesday, September fourth, Mars officially moves into Cancer for the entire month. This is okay. So Mars is in its uh, fault in Cancer. Doesn't do well in Cancer. Mars is like, go, 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 get it, get it, get it. Cancer is like, no, I want to stay home. I want to be with my family. I'm nurturing. Do you know what I mean? So this is a little interesting. Mars and Cancer. We'll talk more about it in the weekly forecast. But there are benefits. Uh, security could could become a big priority for you, family and home. Again, big priority for you. But Cancer does rule your second house. So this is self worth, self value. Uh, you could be a little bit sensitive sensitive in those areas. Remember, cancer is the crap. And then Mars is like, ah, so, and remember this for the collective, everyone could be a little bit, you know, sensitive, extra sensitive, but just turn all that energy into emotionally controlled actions and you're going to be fine. All right. Now, remember what I said, it's your second house. So a lot of focus on money here, a lot of focus on money here, money, finances, uh, just putting things in order. Okay. Now, uh, sun opposite Saturn, Saturday, August 7th. Again, this is the Virgo Pisces suns in Virgo, Saturn's in Pisces. Pay attention to what happens around this time. There's a storyline being told for you. Again, mutable energy here, adapting to change here. You're going to be adapting to some changes here. Uh, so, uh, and you, I would even pay attention to what happened for you around August 19th with a full moon in Aquarius because Venus was opposite that uh, Saturn at that time. So the storyline really started pretty much around that time. But this is a time with this opposition is actually when you start seeing all the hard work that you've done pay off. Okay. It, it's it's got to be uh, one where you can find yourself being very self-expressive within the bounds of Saturn. Remember, Saturn's only here to, you know, build these structures in your life. And Saturn can be a little bit of like, eh, but focus on your spiritual growth. And remember, it is a time. Remember, Mars is in Cancer, too. So 
practice that patience. Saturn is sort of like a TSA agent right now. You already waited in that long line. Saturn makes things go slow, uh, makes things feel like they're going slow. And then you get to the checkpoint. Saturn, he looks at you. He's like, you're okay. Random check, random check where you're not right. You're not going to flip the table. You're going to grin. You're going to bear it. You know, Saturn is karma. You're going to work with your karma. You're going to be fine. All right. It is a big day. All right. Now, uh, Mercury moves into Virgo. That's going to be great. Uh, it's just you being very focused on home matters, family matters, maybe having a lot of conversations there, communication there. Uh, and then Venus will try Jupiter on Saturday, September 14th. This is absolutely amazing. As you know, Jupiter's in your sign. Venus has moved into Libra all month, by the way. So uh, pretty much for the entire month. And so uh, that's going to be really nice for you because Libra does rule your fifth house of love and relationships. And uh, you've got Venus here. So love and relationships, also money. There's something here that these are the two benefics, Venus and Jupiter. So circle this day in your calendar could be definitely a time to be very social, but you could find expansion with love, money, relationships, creativity. Really nice. Now, uh, we do get to Tuesday. That's going to be September 17th, where you do see that we have the full moon, partial lunar eclipse in Pisces again. Saturn's conjoining this, but I want you to see this as like, OK, I'm going to set up this long term energy now, these long term goals for for Gemini's especially with career work matters uh profession fame all right there's something here for you something ending for you for you to elevate for you to ascend something that has legs to it you're going to see that here that long-term energy remember eclipses are uh game changers uh and did i say that i did a video on what to expect with eclipses five things to expect i'll leave it at the end of this video i can't even remember i'm filming this while mercury is retrograde um now the other thing that is happening uh oh there's another day i'll tell i'll tell you later when I when we get to the end of the video where we break it down that I want you especially you to pay attention to um but let's get to Thursday the 19th September 19th the sun trining Uranus oh my goodness this is that big breakthrough you're gonna have a huge breakthrough it's almost like there's gonna be something unclogged for all this creativity to pour for you it's gonna be really really nice you could also receive really amazing auspicious news unexpectedly around this time uh so really really nice energy um and then you we get to saturday the 21st mercury will square jupiter i wouldn't even that's just don't just don't overthink things but sun trining pluto is happening that same day that outshines it that is major that is one of the most uh not only auspicious but most powerful aspects of the month one of the best days of month. This is when someone could truly open up doors for you in a really big way. All right. This is, and it could be someone with low. Remember, this is happening. Pluto's in your eighth house now. Remember, it's gone back to Capricorn. And so that's shared resources. That's like bank loans. That's like inheritance, investments, uh, bonuses, commissions, royalties. There's something here, but there's an authority at play. And so this is you coming into your personal power and having this big transformation, but someone transforming your life as well. Pay Pay attention to this day. Now, Sunday, September 22nd, we officially move into Libra season and fall. So welcome to fall, autumn uh, in the Northern Hemisphere, spring in the Southern Hemisphere. Either way, it's the equinox, big, big time of the year. You know, we get four of these. I will, I'll talk more about it in the weekly forecast, but this is when you could just have a really big focus on having fun. Remember, this is your fifth house. Relationships, partnerships, peace, harmony, justice. Those are all associated with Libra. But just also, Libra is just so social and so are you. So this is really nice. Now, Venus will square Pluto. And I'm bringing this to your attention because this is a very... Okay, so this has to do with love and money. <laughs> has to do with love and money. Remember, Pluto has moved into your eighth house. It is a finance house. So very interesting, all right? Because Venus is still in Libra at this point. Um, just know that this is an aspect where there could be an intensity to love, relationships, money, finances, power struggles in some sort of way, jealousy vibes that uh, Pluto's bringing up around this time. So just be aware of that because right after Venus is moving into Scorpio, now Venus in Scorpio is in its detriment. And if you know Venus in Scorpio, you know Venus in Scorpio. There's this intensity, deep, deep intensity and passion when it comes to love and 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 relationships and uh money 
finances too as well and you can really feel that here a lot of you know even creative projects for you but uh it's just this real i mean just think passion just think uh even like seduction this is venus and scorpio this is it's spicy it's spicy all right so there is jealousy energy that comes with this type of aspect secrets revealed around these you know type of assets uh but just remember you you control your emotions emotions can be heightened around this time with venus and scorpio and mars and cancer and so use your emotions for actions are going to take you you know raise your frequency stay frosty you're going to be cool but again y'all might just really 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 enjoy this uh but a lot of y'all are going to shift that energy toward work your passions daily activity scorpio does rule your sixth house um and then you've got Mercury trining Uranus on Tuesday, September 24th. I love this. Uh, this is another great communication day for you. Really big breakthrough day, big ideas for you. And oh, another big aspect. I'll, I'll tell you later that one, especially for you. Um, I'll tell you when we break it down week by week. But Mercury will move into Libra on Thursday, September 26th. This is really wonderful. This is Having this really nice compromise, understanding, especially with communication, logic, thinking, all about being very diplomatic, building bonds, making things happen in this really balanced way, and uh, thinking in terms of like harmonizing. I mean, this is this is you getting ET a phone. This is you getting him home. This is because remember, it's in Libra, so there is an element of partnerships, relationships as well, uh, commitments as well. But this is just goodwill and, and and love. I love this. And then lastly, Sunday, September 29th, Mark this in your calendar. Mars trining Saturn. The two malefic planets actually doing good for you. Doing good for you. So there is something here. Mars, remember, wants you to take action. Whatever you do on this day could lead something very long term. Remember, Saturn is in Pisces. Remember, when I say long term, this is going to be a theme for you throughout 2025. This is big commitment energy, big goal energy. So Take advantage of 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 Sunday, the 29th, all right? There you go. You like how I like stared at you the entire time? Oh, I always have to like do something to entertain you when I'm drinking water. Anyway, Gemini, let's break it down. Let's see what's going on for you for the week of, oh, no, no, for the month of September 2024 for Gemini and Gemini Rising and Gemini Moon. And if you want to read for any other placements in your chart, you are absolutely welcome to Gemini. So let's see what is going on for Geminis. Now, Gemini, I do a traditional cult across spread. If we need to pull clarifiers, you know that we will. Secondly, Gemini. Oh my goodness. Am I having a Mercury retrograde moment? Did I say after I do your spread, then I break it down week by week? I, I think I did. Yeah. I'm going to tell you, there's so many other aspects that, that are very relevant to you that I'm going to discuss later. Anyway, uh, y'all are amazing. You like my crystal? I got a new crystal. I really love it. We'll talk about it. Yeah, maybe I'll do a, a, a live stream on it. Let's see what's going on. Oh, wow. You're good. Your life changing. Your life is changing. Um, I feel like this is just going to be a month where... Yeah, practice that patience. Things are happening, but remember, there's a window that you get. You get a little peekaboo into uh, next year for you. Now you see that you're good. Uh, let's get started. You got the hermit. Yeah, so you're good. <laughs> well, what's really funny is that the hermit attributed to Virgo. Now, remember, we have the sun in Virgo. We've got a lot of Virgo energy. We got that new moon in Virgo this month as well. Remember, that's home matters. All right. So really go deep. That's what the hermit is doing. He's made all these accomplishments. He's at the top of the hill. Uh, you know, in the medieval times, people would trek for miles and miles and miles and months and, and, and whatnot to get that sage wisdom from the hermit because he's got it. He's got it. OK, you've got it inside you. So this is a matter of going deep doing some soul searching, knowing what you want for your future. Okay. So this is uh, very nice. This is very nice. A lot of wisdom with the hermit. This is being grounded, being grounded in, in your reality in the now. Okay. As you think about your future. All right. So again, a lot of this can be with home related matters, especially with that Vena, uh, Virgo energy. Now, once you do that introspection, that reflection, oh my goodness. Hello. 
I feel like you've been getting this. Okay, so Wheel of Fortune and the heart of your spread for a monthly forecast. This is big. Your life is changing. Your life is changing. And here's the thing. Some of y'all may not even know what direction you want to go. Some of y'all may not even know what you want at this point. Some of y'all may even, it's like you may be straddling a couple ideas. Like, okay, I want to get out of this. I don't know what to do. That Wheel of Fortune is going to bring it. That eclipse is going to bring it. You're going to have the biggest change. You're going to have the biggest change. Remember, you've got Jupiter in your sign. The planet of expansion, good fortune, good luck, and wheel of fortune attributed to Jupiter. Now, remember, we have those Jupiter-Saturn squares. Uh, so you could have been feeling a little bit of that pressure in terms of what do I want next? What do I want next? Well, doors are opening for you now. All right? So don't sweat it. Don't sweat it. Okay? I say this all the time. When was the last time stressing and worrying did anything for you at all? Never, never, it never did. So go within, go, go to the beach, have a diet Coke. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. Everything's changing. You got the wheel of fortune. You got the wheel of fortune. All right. This is all about good fortune. Good luck. This is, uh, those, that wheels turning in your favor, New paths are opening up for you. It's a 10. We're at 10. One zero equals one. New beginning. There's, uh, you're, you're good. New, there's, and it seems like you're going to have multiple options for some of y'all, by the way, we'll talk about it in a second because you got the eight of wands in your challenge area. Some are, some of y'all are feeling, listen, some things, if you feel like some things are not landing for you, there may be a reason why. And it may be because it's all about that timing. Remember, we're getting out of some heavy energies with all those, you know, Mercury was retrograde during a lot of other aspects that are just like slow down slow down slow down remember that remember august okay so uh just remember there may be a reason there uh, it's all about going within but it's also reassessing things in your life so you're gonna see things are gonna change for you all right so this is just saying be patient and uh you may feel that things are going too slow you may feel that some things are maybe going too fast too but just go at the tempo of the the, the frequency that makes you feel like okay i'm in the zone i'm in i'm in that space things are happening for me now you got strength in your crown it's one of the reasons why i'm you know really stressing that is because you have strength in your crown it seems like a lot of y'all are seeking that because look you got the 10 of cups uh 10 of cups in the root of your spread too so there is a sense of yes i want these changes and uh you know i, I need this strength right now because uh maybe i don't know exactly what i want i mean don't forget you've got neptune in your 10th house of career too remember neptune brings that illusion confusion i've said all the time this cut through that fog to be your authentic self that's going to help you know what you want the reality that you want to create for yourself but this is actually this is actually really great all right because it's you're calling for it that strength that inner courage uh you could be finding a lot of that this month as well paths are opening up for you all right paths are opening up for you in this really you know, great, tremendous way. I love this. Ten of Cups as well. Uh, this is complete uh, enjoyment. Enjoy life. This is you know, the only rainbow in tarot that indicates this promising future. You got, you see the happy couple, the happy family, the happy children. There's this sense of innocence here. There's a sense of innocence. You don't stress in innocence. You don't worry in innocence. This is feeling carefree. So, uh, yeah. You're going to be fine. It's just this eight of wands where you just may feel that things are going like, eh, or, or uh, but you're going to be fine. You're going to be good. Everything that you're moving toward, you're going to be excited about. Now you have the two of pentacles in your future. So uh, very interesting here because I did talk about finances with Pluto retrograding and Capricorn may be a big theme for you this month. Now, uh, this card is a Capricorn card attributed to Capricorn, but nonetheless, it is the two of pentacles. So you could be having to make decisions. You're going to have to make decisions or prioritize some things in your life. It's just a matter of making things uh, come together now. All right. Because there could be even this new path that opens up for you and now you're adjusting to it. And so it could be affecting your daily life and your schedules and your routines. Uh, so it's a good thing. Now, the other thing I was saying, a message that was coming through is like some of y'all may be 
getting uh, two different options in terms of uh, moving forward toward your future, which is really great. Remember, you've got Jupiter, your sign, uh, and you are the twin. I've explained this before. You'll see things happening in twos with Jupiter in your sign. So I really like that for you. Just remember, have that adjustment. Let's get to your staff. Gemini. Oh, my goodness. Y'all, uh, you know, I'm one of y'all. I, I Gemini rising and, and, and my Jupiter is in Gemini, too. So but I'm a late degree Jupiter Gemini. So I'm not going to. Anyway, y'all listen. Y'all are amazing. Thanks so much for being here. If you uh, like this reading, it would be great if you like, subscribe, leave comments. High fives all around. Leave con Tell me what's going on, though, because this is a big month. I really, I, I love to see what's going on. I'm like, oh, because sometimes I, I like, well, I read all your comments. I'm like, oh my gosh, that's happening to me. That's happening to me. Oh my gosh. I, it's kind of funny. It's kind of funny. And then I address a lot of your questions in my live streams. And anyway, let's, let's get to your stuff. Uh, yeah, you're going to, there's going to be some inner work. You're going to have to do <laughs> some inner work that you, uh, are going to be doing, but it is only because your life is changing and let's get started. You got the three of ones. So yeah, you do want this change. You want this change. You've been see you a lot. Of, it's almost like there's possibly some Gemini's out there who have been like job hunting. It's like y'all have been looking out there. All right. You've been looking out there and it doesn't have to. It can just be something that you're really passionate about. Again, maybe starting your own business, maybe starting to, you know, I don't know, sell things on eBay, whatever you want, whatever you do, Gemini, uh, could be something with love relationships. All right. Whatever you are, you know, putting that energy, but, uh, you're ready now. You're ready. I feel like this is a month where you're just, you know, you're going to want to take those steps in that direction. Uh, it's part of your self-discovery. It's part of your spiritual growth as well. Now, you also have the Four of Cups in your external factors area. Four of Cups have been coming up a lot this month, all right, uh, for the other signs. But Four of Cups, uh, yeah, let me, let me clarify that one. Oh, gosh. Interesting. So, yeah. Um, there may be, okay, so there really, really may be someone that is kind of part of your journey. Um, that's part of your storyline. It could be a boss that you need to have a conversation with. It could be a recruiter at another company. It could also be your significant other. It could be a family member, whatever re resonates with you. But it just seems like they may be in a place where you've got to bring them to on your level, all right? Because they may be a little bored with a situation or, uh, you know, being uh, like maybe even hearing the same thing from you over and over. I'm not saying that in a bad way. I'm saying that that, that is the four of cups that is highly associated with boredom and apathy. And it's in your external factors area. And you are the, you're Gemini's, you're the communicator, you rule the third house. So y'all can, like, I can talk, I can talk and talk and talk. Anyway, uh, but yeah, it's just a matter of bringing that person on board and it just can be someone that is a little bit more significant that uh, is, again, part of your journey forward. But you have the Knight of Cups here, which is really nice. There may honestly be something here with the Knight of Cups is like the knight in shining armor. So if you are here for love and romance, this is really great. Once you bring that person on board, again, if it is something with love and romance, significant other where you're just not seeing eye to eye, but it's them. It's them that has to raise things their gratitude and find, you know, that spark again or whatever it is. But uh, with the Knight of Cups, it's all very possible here. Okay. It's all very possible. The Knight of Cups is someone who uh, really wants to, he's very romantic, very romantic. And someone who is also looking to be emotionally fulfilled. So it's really interesting coming with the Four of Cups here. Uh, Four of Cups is also attributed to it's well it's a cancer card okay it's moon and cancer um so with that said remember what i said earlier how cancer rules your second house of finances and money there really could be something involved here where uh, whatever direction you're going, there a decision that you have to make about it, or even with two opportunities coming through that is obviously making a decision to, there really could be someone who is just not seeing it the way that you do. All right. So just remember, be open to communication and compromise. All right. And you've got this Knight of Cups energy. Now you also have the Nine of Wands. This is great. It's just saying that it's, it's perseverance. This is, um, not, it's like 
if you feel that you were knocked down, you keep getting back up. That's what this card is. Nothing is going to take away everything that he's worked hard for. You see, he's actually in front of the ones protecting them. And then finally, you have the moon and your final outcome. This is okay. So when I say we the, the moon in tarot is attributed to Pisces. So when I say this full moon lunar eclipse that we have in Pisces is going to be big, you can bet it's going to be big. Look how full that moon is. All right. So uh, there's a lot of going within. There's a lot of it. All just seems like that. A lot of this is the not knowing, um, especially here. Remember, I said eclipses are game changers. It's the same thing with the Wheel of Fortune. You see the Sphinx sitting on top of the wheel like you don't know the direction this path that's opening for you and so there is a sense of like okay which way are things going but that's what you have to really go within because you uh feel a little bit of that with the moon as well there's this sense of with the moon and your final outcome yes you could be in a place where you really need to go within and go deep and trust your intuition one of the reasons why is you see that story being played out here the moon card 18 one eight equals nine equaling the hermit you see the hermit's face in the moon okay so the lot of this is really going within for you because there's a big change happening and it just may be in a direction where you're like whoa i had no idea that it was gonna go that way but um i'm gonna clarify the moon here oh gosh and then you got okay so take that time to go within Really know what you want. Be your authentic self. Really listen to your inner voice. Okay. The moon is intuition. So really take that time. Really take that time because you also got the eight of cups, which is attributed to Saturn and Pisces. So the fact that you have these two Pisces cards, you see the lunar eclipse happening here as well. So we have a full moon lunar eclipse happening in Pisces this month. If this is not a sign, then, uh, you know, I'm not wearing two necklaces. This is big. This is big. This is great, though, because this is a you are walking away. You are walking away because you know something is better for, for you. But that is not possible until you go within and make that decision for yourself and really, really, really go within and have that moment. Um, wow, that is insane. That is insane that that happened. I'm going to pull one more. I'm going to do one more clarifier for you just I, because out of my curiosity. You got the nine of swords. And then it's, uh, so get out of your head. Everything that I've been saying, go with it. Go. I talked about your pineal gland, Re your intuition, your third eye. That's what you got to do. Okay. You're going to be moving away, but there is going to be a sense of maybe not feeling very confident about the, you know, walking away from something. Trust your intuition. You're going to be fine. Remember, um, What's really interesting, by the way, is, well, you have the Nine of Swords, and you can see all these swords stacked up. So this is really overanalyzing things. This is being like uh, too much, too much, okay? Overthinking things. That's what Gemini, Gemini's question everything. And they, you know, we, our mind, we're, um, you know, we're, our minds are a million miles a minute. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, so there is this potential that you could definitely you know over analyze overthink things this card is actually attributed to mars and gemini so it is one of your cards but you see you have the sun so if you can work with this energy and when i say working with that energy don't spend so much time in your physical mind higher mind go to your higher mind there's a difference between the physical mind and the higher mind you're going to be fine you got the sun and so you're actually really good here you know that right you know that you're really good. You just get out of your head a little bit, especially with the moon and then with the nine of uh, swords. But yeah, it seems like a lot of y'all are going to be leaving something behind. Um, and then again, there with the eclipse, it can be something that you didn't, you know, it's like game changing. You may get in your head a little bit like, oh my gosh, should I make the right decision? Is it, Trust your intuition. You're going to be fine. And then you got the sun. If you can not work with that... <laughs> Uh, or just be in this headspace um, mindset that just over analyzing things. You got the sun, which is if you've ever got a tarot reading, you know that the sun is the biggest yes. So you're moving into this big yes. 
this abundance, opportunities here, optimism. Good, I mean, like you're good. You're absolutely good. <laughs> So, and I'm saying this to myself too. I'm like, ah, uh, but you're good. Your life is changing. Big change is happening. You're moving forward. You're going to have a little bit of, you know, like I'm going to say, I'm gonna do, okay, well, let's, let's break it down week by week. Let's do that because there are some days, there are some weeks where it's really interesting. It feels like uh, Austin Powers. If you ever saw that, maybe when he was in the car and he was just like, er, er, er. So there are some some of those, but let's get started. Uh, first week of September. Uh, yeah, so we have the Uranus retrograde, Cap uh, Pluto retrograde in Capricorn. We've got the new moon in Virgo set intentions. Definitely a lot of home, domestic sector related matters around this time. Uh, and then Mars squaring Neptune. That is just, remember, there's that deception, illusion, especially with career. Remember, Neptune is in Pisces in your 10th house of career. Um, and Mars is still in your sign at this point. Remember that. So, uh, and then Mars moves into Cancer on the 4th. So there is going to be a big shift into home and family and children, like I mentioned earlier, uh, your home life. And then Sun opposite Saturn on Saturday the 7th. Okay. And so we talked about that. Just find, you know, it is a good time to find like this balancing act. But remember, focus on your spiritual growth and just know that you may see around this time your hard work is is paying off, okay, with Saturn. So let's see what's going on for you, Gemini, for the first week of September. And you got the King of Wands. Excellent, excellent. There is this entrepreneurial spirit with the king of wands. I say he's like the Steve Jobs of tarot. Like nobody, he, he don't work for anybody. He worked his way up like the king of wands. He's not sitting in this throne from succession or whatnot. I mean, this is someone who is a very transformative king. A lot of changes. He can make a lot of changes because he's got that passion. This is epitome of fire. We're talking about the king of wands here. So a lot of passion here, a lot of passion that I, you're going to be feeling that first week. You're going to be wanting to, to do things. And this is the week where you're going to start uh, really, really having an emphasis on changing your life. All right. You're going to feel it right away. Now, the second week of September, uh, Mercury does move into Virgo, as I mentioned. You know, we do have on the 11th, uh, September 11th. Uh, Mercury sextiling Mars. All right. So remember, we had this last month, but they've changed signs. So Mercury being in Virgo at this point, and then Mars in Cancer. So there could be something here with finances and home. Okay. Uh, but this is a great aspect, very stimulating, very pragmatic, really nice. Uh, and then uh, let's see. Thursday, I want you to pay attention to this the Sun Square Jupiter. Uh, this is September 12th. Treat yourself with Sun Square Jupiter. Treat yourself. You'll probably do it anyway with this type of aspect. Focus on your growth. There's a lot of mental stimulation here of with the Sun Squaring Jupiter. Remember, Jupiter is in your sign. You're really going to feel this. Uh, maybe have to, to do with your domestic sector as well. So the fact that the sun is in Virgo, Jupiter is in your sign. I mean, y'all are the two signs that are Mercury ruled, right? So there could be a lot going on up here, but it could be very productive for you. I actually like this aspect. It has this like Boy Scout, Girl Scout energy. Like I can do this. I'm going to be great. I got this, but you'll feel the cogs starting. And then Saturday, one of the best aspects, Venus trining Jupiter. Remember Jupiter's in your sign. I love this money and love could be big themes here. So let's see what's going on for you for the second week of... September and you got the eight of pentacles very interesting eight of pentacles very Virgo uh, that card is attributed to Sun and Virgo actually uh, so again you are going to have a lot of focus on home and family and your domestic sector real estate even but this is you just being very disciplined going after your goals uh really laser focused nothing's going to stop you he's even removed himself from the village to work on uh his pedicles and so this can be 
uh, if if not home, just whatever you're investing your time, effort, blood, sweat, tears into that you want, you will have that f- focus. Mercury and Virgo brings that too. All right. So this is really great. Uh, I want you to actually, by the second week, there may be something. I'm going to see something here. Okay, six of cups. So yeah, there's, uh, you know, and this is the biggest house in tarot. So again, another nod to your domestic sector. There really could be something here that uh, it's, you know, the six of cups offers a lot of protection, a lot of security, makes you feel that protection and security, uh, the foundations in your life. But there is this nostalgic quality to the six of cups. But there's definitely something here where whatever you're working toward is going to bring you this love and compassion and gratitude and just this feeling of like, I can let my hair down, uh, feeling that, uh, even again, just nostalgic energy as well. Uh, thinking about the things that have brought you joy is likely going to motivate you this week. Really nice. All right. So third week, Tuesday, September 17th, we have the full moon, lunar eclipse, and Pisces. This is definitely going to be really big. Remember, mark this in your calendar. We'll talk about it more in your weekly forecast. Um, The day that I was going to tell you, the 18th, uh, September 18th, so Wednesday, Mercury will be opposite Saturn. So this is a day where I don't want you signing anything, okay, Gemini? Don't sign anything. Contracts, don't make any agreements. Even try not to negotiate around this time. I mean, this is Saturn, really. I mean, he's put on the aviators at this point. You know, he's... mm -mm -mm. So just don't... Remember, Mercury's your ruling planet. So just keep that in mind. All right. Now, uh, Thursday, we'll... September 19th, sun trining Uranus. I love this breakthrough energy, big breakthrough. We talked about this. Now on the 20th, the day after the sun is going to be opposite Neptune. This is a day where it's playing out here. The sun opposite Neptune is when, uh, you know, that aspect can make people feel a little self, you know, critical or harsh on themselves when they don't have to be. Okay. They don't have to be. It's like you, it's like you putting together, you know, Ikea furniture for the first time. You're like, I got this. I'm amazing at this. And then you realize you did it all wrong. And then you're just like, Oh, I'm the worst. Like, well, you did like, don't do that. Just take that time. Just like undo everything. Redo it again. Look up at the universe. Like, hi, you got me. You got me. You're not going to do it again. Let it slide, let it go. You're going to be fine. Okay. So that is what I'm talking about here is like, uh, like moving into this great direction, but then like, ah, like, uh, like overanalyzing things and maybe being hard on yourself, but you got the sun at the end of it all. So, uh, all right. Keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. You're going to be fine. Uh, and sun trining Pluto. We talked about that. So let's see what's going on for you. All right. Let's see what's going on for you for the third week of. September and sun trining Pluto, by the way, like I said, one of the best aspects. And then you also got the six of uh, pentacles, which is absolutely amazing. So you can start seeing that there is, you know, six of cups with the six of pentacles. It's special. It's special. I talked about harm. I mean, they were talking about six, the middle pillar here. There's that balance. There's this sense of uh, things harmonizing for you now in a really great way. You see the very philanthropic man here, like supporting these people. If you're seeking support financially, especially it's coming through. Okay. Uh, you could also be the one that's, you know, really putting that energy out there and being this helping hand. I, I love this. I, I love this energy for you. Uh, there is this great balance here and, you know, gratitude at a really high frequency. It's also, uh, like sharing is caring, you know, that you see it in both of these cards, but also like, like spiritual wealth. Okay. So, uh, now in the last week, uh, we officially move into Libra season. And then we talked about Venus squaring Pluto and Venus moving into Scorpio. Um, Tuesday, the 24th, we talked about Mercury training Uranus. Now the 25th, September 25th, this is when Mercury uh, is going to oppose Neptune. Again, Mercury bring your ruling planet. So again, illusion, delusion, confusion, especially with words you hear, things communicated with you. Just cut through that fog with Neptune. Okay, Neptune brings that fog, cut through it. And 
I am going to go ahead and say it. I do like this aspect for you because sometimes you need fog to know your truth. And especially, again, if you're here for career, Neptune is in your 10th house of career. Cut through that fog. Cut through that fog and 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 you're going to know your truth. All right. Uh, Mercury will try and Pluto that same day, by the way. So that is amazing. Uh, this is really great. Now, this is... Uh, with Mercury trining Pluto, especially for you, with Mercury being your ruling planet, this is like, you could sell sand to a conch. I mean, this is, this is amazing. negotiating, communicating, very powerful, persuasive, influential with the way that you speak. This is the day where you could definitely, uh, you know, go, go deep. All right, go deep, go wide. Even you discovering parts of yourself that you're like, oh, I didn't know I had that in me. Big, powerful clarity with its day. Uh, and then, you know, Mercury moves into Libra. Mars trines Saturn. Uh, I can't wait to talk about their weekly forecast. And then, actually, we end the month with, on the 30th, with the Sun conjuncting Mercury. We have a Mercury Kazemi in Libra. Oh, my goodness. That's your fifth house of uh, joy and fun and creativity, love and relationships. Really, really nice having this refresh especially in clarity how you see things so another big week let's see what's going on for you gemini for the last week of september <laughs> oh <laughs> all right so let me entertain you while i look for the card here it is okay um nine of cups there you go amazing amazing that's a card of total satisfaction, everything going your way, you being proud of yourself for the accomplishments, the uh, working toward everything, for that emotional fulfillment, spiritual fulfillment, a lot of enlightenment here. This is the wish come true card. I say it's genie in a bottle energy. You see him sitting there like a genie in a bottle. So something that you're wishing for is happening as we know with the sun and your final outcome uh don't forget you have the wheel of fortune in you know, the heartier spread you also have the ten of cups right here i mean this is really great so yeah this is you know it, it seems like a month of big change as you know wheel of fortune and the sun a big deal big deal in big placements of your spread okay heartier spread final outcome but don't forget you've got some don't overanalyze things do not overanalyze things. And here's the secret. When you're in touch with your higher self, with your higher mind, when you're vibrating at that high frequency, you don't overanalyze anything. Everything is seamless. And you know that. You know that. Okay? So trust your intuition. Trust your intuition. You have that come up with a hermit in the moon. Trust your intuition. Your intuition you're going to be fine. You see a lot of things coming together. You see a lot of harmonizing here. You uh, really working toward it and wanting it. So you're going to be good. Gemini, thanks so much for tuning in. If you like this reading, it would be great. If you like, subscribe, leave comments. And next week, we'll go deeper into uh, the first week of uh, September. So thank you so much. I'll see you next week. All right. Bye-bye.